So let's get to it. First, I wanna talk about the design of what we're actually gonna be deploying because I think if I just start with the configuration, it's easy to get mixed up and confused. So we're gonna go through a couple of slides. I've just kind of laid out what my lab looks like and what we're gonna build. So let's do that. Looking at this slide, you'll see that I have a few components here and I wanna kind of start at the top and move our way down. So you'll see here it says redundant pair of CSR 1000V routers. These are literally two CSR 1000V VMs or virtual machines that I've deployed in my home lab that are pretending to be kind of physical routers. So their whole purpose is essentially the on and off ramp to and from the NSX overlay and networks once we configure those. So as you'll see here on the slide, we have a couple of segments. We have web segment and the app segment. The end result that we're going for will be that those segments will route through those CSRs to get outside of the NSX world. So we're gonna be running BGP from the CSR 1000 Vs down to an NSX, what we refer to as the T0 gateway. And that is basically, again, kind of the on off ramp on the NSX side for everything north, south, or in and out of NSX, basically. So we're gonna have BGP set up on the tier zero. We're also gonna set up what we call a T1 router, which is basically, I, I like to think of it as a tenant router. And there's some design choices around whether you have a T1 or don't have one, it's not required, but that's outside of the scope for today. So if you're interested in that, check out some of my other videos. I go through some of this uh, from a design discussion standpoint. That said, we're gonna connect those segments that we create up to the T1. The T1 will be connected to the T0. And then on top of that, we're also gonna deploy a new vCenter. Uh, we're gonna name it MG-VCSA01. That's gonna be vCenter 7.0. And we're gonna give it the IP listed here. Now, if you're kind of curious about what my actual lab looks like, as in what do I actually have in the room with me right now, this is it. I have three physical hosts. These are actual micro ATX boxes. I have three of them, as I mentioned. Uh, so host one, host two, host three. Those have uh, single or dual, in most case, connections via CAT5 up to a Cisco 3560 switch. Basically, I'm trunking everything to these hosts, and I do most of my actual configuration within vCenter. Now, for the sake of the lab that we're gonna go through today, this is what you really want to kind of lock onto and think of. I'm gonna be using nested vSphere. So I mentioned in that previous slide that I have three physical hosts but you can now forget that. That was just so that you knew what my lab looked like. This is what we care about. So we're gonna deploy a total of four vSphere hosts. These are ESXi 7.0 hosts. We're gonna deploy them running on top of those three physical hosts that we just looked at. And we're also gonna trunk all VLANs to them the same way we would for a physical server. And that's why I said you can kind of forget about the fact that I have three physical boxes because in all reality, it's gonna function like as if I actually had four, as you can see on the slide here. Now I know some of you are probably wondering, do I need four hosts to run NSXT? You don't, you could actually collapse this even further. I just chose four because I like to keep things clean and I typically go with this setup when I do other videos. So you'll see here we have this Edge VM and the Edge VM, you can think of it as a pool for capacity for virtual routers. So what I mean by that is you have the Edge VM here and we typically deploy two for redundancy. And within that Edge VM, we have a T0 router, which is our on off ramp. That's where we're actually gonna run BGP. We will also have a T1 router there as well. And as I mentioned, everything's redundant. We can actually go even further and do things like active active. Uh, and that's all out of the scope for today. We'll be doing basically a, a two edge deployment. So we'll have two edge VMs. We'll have a T0 on, east, on each one. We'll have an active and standby. Uh, and then the BGP, as I mentioned, will be configured from that T0. I do also wanna mention that there's a few networks the edge itself will connect to. And as you see on the slide here, the first one is the management network, which is pretty straightforward. That's just an IP address that we can hit the uh, edge on, whether it be SSH or that the manager can actually talk to it. It needs to have a management IP that's reachable. That's pretty much self-explanatory, I think. It also needs to connect to the overlay network. Now this is going to be the overlay network that you're running on your workloads or your VMs. So in my case, I have the app and web segments. I will actually need to have that same overlay segment extended to the edge. The reason is because the edge is basically translating from the Geneve overlay encapsulation to standard VLAN traffic. So as you see here on the bottom, it mentions the edge is also connected to some VLANs that go upstream. So the way it pretty much works is that if we have overlay networks, they tunnel the traffic via Geneve to the edge 
the edge decapsulates them and then drops them on the wire as standard ethernet traffic. And don't stress the specifics here, it'll all start to make a lot more sense once we get into actually doing it. So let's start. 